and um, it's a, a pleasure to introduce uh, plenary session seven and um, Dr. Henriquez Joko Yulianto. Uh, Dr. Yulianto is a teaching staff at the English department of um, Universitas Negeri Semarang, Central Java, Indonesia. He received his PhD in English and Poetics in 2018 from the State University of New York in Buffalo. Uh, his research interests are in avant-garde American poetry, especially the Beat Generation and Black Mountain College poets. And he has a special interest in the environmental humanities, eco-poetics, and animal poetics. Um, from 2015 to 2019, he presented uh, papers on beat poets and also Black Mountain College poets at conferences in the US, uh, Philippines, and uh, in uh, Jogakarta and Samarang, Indonesia. So um, thank you very much for joining us today, Dr. Yulianto, and please uh, proceed when you're ready. Yes. Uh, do you have a PowerPoint to present? Yes, sure, but now I'm still trying to uh, display my PPT. Okay, when you click uh, present okay. now and then a window, uh, does it show up there? Okay, yes, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Okay. Okay. Is it is it there? Uh, yes, we can see your PowerPoint and hear you clearly. So looking good. Okay. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so my the title of my paper here is an ethnolitary visit to folk tradition of Sedulur Sikap community of Central Java. Uh, folklore is an authentic artifact in an indigenous community. This oral literature belongs to what is called oral tradition as one heritage of a native community. This includes myths, legends, folk tales, jokes, proverbs, riddles, chants, charms, blessings, curses, oaths, retorts, taunts, and other folk aspects. Preferring to folklore theory of an American folklorist, uh, Jan Hart Brunfan, Dananjaya divided folklore in Indonesia into three major groups, verbal folklore, partly verbal folklore, and non-verbal folklore. Verbal folklore is a group of work that is purely verbal or oral, including folk speech, success dialect, traditional and aristocratic appellations, Proverbs, maxims, riddles, folk poems, myths, legends, folk tales, and folk songs. Other forms include uh, folk games, folk, uh, folk theatrical performances, folk dances, customs, ceremonies, and feasts. Nonverbal folklore contains two kinds material and non material works. The material works include folk architecture, uh, the shape of houses paddy mills, handicrafts, traditional jewelry, folk foods, and beverages. Whereas the non-material non works uh, include traditional gestures, several alarm signals, and folk music. Samin or Sedul Sikap community as the only living and enduring communities in Glora and Pati in Central Java, live their lives by believing in these verbal proverbs and teachings inherited from their ancestors. This paper deals with an ethno-literary visit to folk tradition of Sedulur Sikap community in Blura and Pati, Central Java. Two aspects that this paper addresses. First, a folkloric tradition of Sedulur Sikap as an indigenous community in Blura and Pati. And the second one, Sedulur Sikap ancestral teachings and agrarian way of life as the very epitome of ecological resilience. The discussion of, on Samanese folkloric aspects is focused on their farming, its local wisdom, and the impacts on building ecological resilience in this millennium era. 
The term ethnography comes from Greek words ethnos, that means nation, and graphia, or write, which means writing. So the word denotes writing about nation. This also suggests a descriptive science and a community or culture. Ethnography often serves as a field for research and research method, specifically ethnographic research and ethnographic method. As a research method, ethnography requires a researcher to participate in people's daily lives for an extended time to observe them and listen to what they say about their lives. The researcher then asks questions in formal interviews and collects documents and artifacts that are related to the issues. Ethnographic research in general studies people's actions and accounts in their daily basis. The significance of the term ethnography in this paper is that the discussion will deal with the farming tradition as, as a folkloric aspect of the settler Sikh community in Lura and Pati. The term folklore consists of two words, folk that means people and lore means story. The term folk refers to any group of people who share at least one com common factor. This denotes a collection of words that people pass from one generation to another in a verbal rather than a written way. And it, it's often called for a tradition. Folklore suggests a body of work that an individual transmits to another by word or act or by indirect, indirect ways when an artist copies a certain traditional design from other artists with whom she or he has personal contact. This is associated with the work of oppressed people, farmers, and working class people rather than the aristocracy. The name Sedulur Sikap is an euphemism for the word Samin, in which the letter, the letter re refers to a name of a local villager, Samin Surasundiko, who was born in 1859 in Ploso village, Kadir and Blura, Blura Regency. His real name was Raden Kohar, but then converted to Samin since the name suggested egalitarianism. He was the second of all five sons. In his village, Samin was equated to Bimasena or Barkudoro. This is the, the figure of Japanese uh, puppets, puppet figures, Japanese puppet figures. The second son of five sons are called Pandawa in Japanese puppet mythology. In about 1890, when he was 31 years old, Samin began to spread his teachings. His followers were local villagers. Through his practice of tapa brata, or a kind of meditation, he received a spiritual enlightenment of Kalimosodo scripture. Since then, his followers were getting more increased, even those from other villages. In the early 19th century, Samin and his followers were well known for their rest resistance to Dutch colonizers in Java. The Saminists did not express their resistance through physical violence, but through disobedience to donate their rice harvest, uh, to pay taxes, and to follow other Dutch originated social orders. Yet the Samin people do not like being called Samin since the name connotes stigmas of those who refuse to pay taxes, who often resist and deny common rules, who often steal thick wood, and whose marriages do not follow Islamic rules. They prefer being called Wong Sikap, or uh, Sikap Fellows, or Sedulur Sikap, or Kings of Sikap. The Japanese word Sikap in general means to embrace. But for the Samin community, the word has different meanings. First, it means the origin of humans. Second, it refers to Japanese spiritual learning. And third, it means to forage. Several typical forms of identity that characterize the community are their language, clothing, and family kinship. The people use symbol Japanese in their daily talk. They do not divide their Japanese into three levels, such as refined, high-level Japanese, middle Japanese, and colloquial Japanese, 
as uh, Japanese languages have, especially in Yogyakarta and Surakarta. The male Samen people wear black garments, garments and a headdress called a sikap, while the female members wear a Japanese outfit called a kebaya. In their household, they use a snack container called kranang, a rice container made of bamboo called wakul, and a wooden rice cook called an endong, a drinking water pitcher called kendi, and earthenware cup and saucer called cangkir and lepek, and wooden and bamboo furniture. So here are some pictures of the uh, female, uh, sedur sika female outfit. It's called kebaya, and this is the male uh, outfit, uh, wearing like black and a headdress. So on the bottom right side is the picture of uh, Samin Srosendiko, the ancestor of sedur sika community. So here are the pictures of the uh, household utensils uh, made of bamboo and then also made of earthenware uh, stuff and the left side are made of bamboo sorry made of wood now this is my first uh, uh, discussion inherited folk ethics of the sedul sikap community in Blura and party regencies sedul sikap community community does farming as their uh, livelihood. The community has cognizance of the merits of rice fields so that they continuously take care of them. They believe that sufficiency, sufficiency can only be achieved by hard work and the ideal work is farming. So here's the, their uh, kind of principle or their teaching uh, written in Japanese. Yeah? Tiang pengen urip kesang kedah totong granta maco tandur kangi ngekapi keluarga ni. So here I translate into English. For less, it means like uh, like this: whoever wants to live has to work hard by uh, hoeing the soil to fulfill his family necessities. This party-based uh, livelihood correlates with their care for the earth as the place to protect and respect since the earth is nothing else but mother. This is also in Japanese. Yen ono anak sing ora hormat karo bumi niku, teng niki mboten wonten manut paham kula. Sebab kalih biyunge kedah sae lan kedah ngajeni. So now here the English translation more or less. If there is someone who does not cherish the earth or land, there is nobody like this in our community. Since we are aware that we have to respect our mother. So they they consider that the earth is like our mother. The leading figures named Bahlasio, uh, the word Bah here in English means grandfather or like an old figure in Klopodur village. And then uh, Bah Pramugi, Prawiro Vijaya in Duko Blimbing Sabung Raja village in Blora. And then Kunratno, he is a kind of young generation of Sedulur Sikap community, and he is also environmental activist in Sukolilo village party. So they are like the epitome of the indigenous people who still preserve the ecocentric and folkloristic way of life with the surging global consumerist impacts. So here are the pictures of them. So the on the left, this Upper left side is Balasio from Blura, and this one uh, the Pramugi from Blura also. And this one is Miss uh, Gundratno, is in party. And this right side, uh, bottom right side, also the Pramugi. In uh, their party harvest time, the Sedur Sika people will divide their harvest into four parts, namely Wineh or it means seeds, and then sandang, or clothing, and panen, harvest, and bawon. So the word sandang here means that they will use money from their party selling to buy clothes, jewelry, or home appliances. The word pangan also means that they can use their harvest to fulfill their own daily food. 
Then the word bawan refers to lab, uh, labor conducted by someone to till the rice paddies. One example of Sedulur Sikap life principle related to their uh, reliance on farming as their livelihood is whoever wants to live has to work hard by hooing to fulfill his family necessities. This uh, natural livelihood uh, also tallies with the sufficiency principle in consuming food and other daily goods. So it is uh, their principle in Japanese. Nadoniku gesa cekape, kanggene kulongoten, wonggi nado sak lawase nge kedah ti atos-atos kersane cekap. So here I translate the English, eating should be sufficient in order that we can eat for longer periods. The ways they perceive and interact uh, with the natural environment further exemplify another folkloric ecological awareness since this belief was derived from their ancestor, Samin Surosundiko. These verbal teachings consist of eight items called in Sanskrit, Hasta Brata. So this, I, I guess this is from Hinduism. Hasta means eight, that includes eight elements of the natural environment, namely Surya or the sun, Chandra or the moon, Kimando or cloud, cloudy, Pumi means the earth, and Kartika, the stars and Gani is fire, Angin is wind, Banyu means water. Brata means manner or self-control. So yes, I take from the an article on uh, the websites. Yeah, you can check check it out by yourself. This is the link. So learning from the natural life is the best local wisdom inherited their ancestors' principles, Samin Surosundika, who once rejected education as it came from the Dutch colonizers. The recent descendants of Sedulusi community also do not have interest in formal education. Most of the families do not send their children to formal schools. The parents teach their children to read and write at home. So it's a kind of homeschooling, yeah? homeschooling. They have a belief that formal education does not always bring goodness since many educated people often abuse their intellectual abilities to commit crime and deceit. Sedulur so Sikap communities Semblora and Pati believe in the need for caring and conserving the natural environment, including non-human animals and vegetation. The natural resources are the source of life that give them food, clothing, and livelihood so that they have to take care of them. They tend and till their rice fields thoroughly so that they could harvest more crops. So here in, they, they say the principle in Japanese here. Kersane asile kata sing nagopumi kelahiran iku geh ketasai. In order that the rice fields will give more crops, those who tend to them should be good persons too. They view the natural environment and the earth as mother that humans have to cherish, just like we respect and love our mothers. This begins from the time we live in our mother's womb for nine months and ten days until she gives birth to us. Then she breastfeeds and nourishes us until we grow up. So here, what they say in Japanese, Yeoniku seng nurun ke kulo, mula ngurip-ngurip, milo kedah diajeni. So this in, in English, uh, more or less, yeah. Mother is the one who gives birth to us, brings us up, educates and nurtures us. So we must respect her. The communities practice several ways of cultivating and growing rice in their fields. Among them include Sawah Pencha, or Pencha rice field. It's a field that gets irrigation from ditches. And then Sawah Bero, or Bero rice field, is an unproductive field since its irrigation is intermittent. And then Sawah Berbandar Hidup, or life-based life rice field, is a field that gets irrigation from rivers. And Sawah Berbandar Langit, or sky-based rice field, is a field that gets water from rains. It is also known as Sawah Jajaran, or juxtaposed rice field. So this is my uh, literal translation. Sawah Air, or water rice field, Sawah Tadawujar, or water 
receptacle rice field. Sawaka Jeruan or Kajeruan rice field is a field that is set aside for a village chief. This is similar to Sawah uh, Kelungguhan or this is also literal translation, occupational rice field. And then Sawah Kesukihan or Kesukian rice field is a private rice field belonging to individuals. Sawah Kitri or Kitri rice field, uh, I haven't checked check out what the word Kitri means, yeah, sorry. It's a private rice field but can be equated. Sawah Tawang or Tawang rice field is a swampy rice field. Besides, they also use other lands for farming called Pegal and Pekarangan. It's a kind of garden where uh, they usually grow like uh, vegetables and fruits. <clears throat> So here's some images of rice fields in Java. And they also use uh, buff, uh, buffalo to plough the rice fields. Yeah? But uh, now modern farmers, they use like uh, modern uh, tractors yeah? like, uh, to plough the rice fields. Yeah? So uh, now the second uh, discussion. Uh, is my paper is Saminis agrarian, uh, agrarianism as folk tradition to forge ecological resilience. One prominent quality of Sedulusik communities is their modesty, their modesty, non materialistic traits, yeah, they are non materialistic, and moral and spiritual qualities that they derive from their ancestors' principles. The name Sikap that denominates them is based upon three principles, namely ucap means verbal expressions, particle means like inner thoughts, and kelakuan means behaviors and manners. Furthermore, other three moral ethics that regulate behaviors and manner are ruh or conscience, ailing or cognizance, and sabar for or uh, forbearance. The main teachings of Samin Surasandiko toward his descendants are expressed in codes of ethics as well as yes. so there are at least more uh, seven. So here also uh, uh, expressed in Japanese. Agama iku gaman. Adam pengucape man gaman lanang. So now this is my literal translation. Religion is a weapon or life principle. And then the second principle. Ojo trengki, serai, tukar padu, daven, kemeren, ojo kutil, jumput, bedok, nyolong. So here my tra English translation. Do not disturb others. Do not quarrel. Do not be envious of others. Do not take away others' belongings. And then the next. Saber lan trokal, mpun ngantos trengki, serai, mpun ngantos serio, sapodo, mpun nganti, pek, pinepek, kutil, jumput, Bedok nyolong, nopo malih bedok colong, nopo bilik milik barang nemu barang tang dal dalan mawon kulo simpangi. So here yeah, my little transition. Act patiently and do not be arrogant. Do not be arrogant. Do not bother others. Do not be conceited. Do not take away others' belongings. Do not steal, loot, and even do not take away others' goods that are scattered scattered on the street. The next principle, wang urip kudu ngerti urip esfe, urip siji jika salah si. So my transition, one must understand his or her life because living and soul are only one that each individual bring for a lifetime. And the next principle, wang enom mati urip e titip sing urip, bayi uto nangis, ngeer, sop mau ketemu rogo. Jadi mulane wang niku mboten mati, nen hingga sandangan niku nge. Kedah sabar lantroka sing diarah turuni. Dadi ora mati nanging kumpul sing urip. Ape wong salawase sepisan dadi wong. Sa salawase dadi wong. Oke, okay. nama English translation. If a young person dies, his or her soul is entrusted to those who are living. A crying baby is a sign of the, meet the meeting between body and soul. Therefore, when that person's soul is not gone, but only leaving his or her corporeal body. One could be forbearing and persevering for the sake of his or her descendants. Therefore, the soul is not dead, 
but gathers with the living souls. Once he or she does good deeds, he or she forever will be a good person. The next principle, pangucap soko lima, lima bundelani ono pitu, lan pangucap soko songo bundelani ono pitu. Analogously, one speaks from number five and stops at number seven, from number nine to number seven again. This means a sign that one should mind the way he or she speaks. It means we should mind the way we speak. Agrarian spirit breeds ecological merits. The agrarian values that the communities observe in their daily life bring benefits to environmentally beliefs. Their allegiance to farming and ancestral moral principles restrains them from being engrossed in material overconsumption. Most adult Sikha families live adequately by only cultivating and harvesting rice and other commodity plants from their fields and ladam. Most of them feel contented with what they have without having any desires to pursue more material gains. They do not have luxuries such as big houses, cars, high-tech electronic gadgets. Most of, them, most of them live in traditional houses of Limasan or Kampung uh, Joglo, in which their walls are made of kebyok or thick wood or a gedek or a kind of plated bamboo. So let's take a look at the following pictures. So here are the houses of the Sadursi communities in Lora. Yeah, so all the houses made of uh, wood. And then the Sadursi communities are eco-oriented people. They cherish their fields, their paddy and animals in their houses. They use material goods only if they need them, only if they need them. Their eco-friendly behavior bring benefits to create an environmentally clean atmosphere in the villages. Their relatively less consumption of commercial products then means to reduce the ecological footprint. This also means to minimize plastic trash and domestic waste from the overconsumption of the products with plastic wraps or containers. The Sadur Sikop families are ecologically conscientious, conscientious figures. Some leading figures, as you call Lopati, like the, the man Kundatno yeah, and his younger sister Kunarti, they develop organic farming practices and home energy. Kundatno especially cultivates go down of his cattle to produce energy for gas and electricity. So the, uh, last year I went there and I interviewed him and he told he told me about this, uh, his, uh, and also, also his uh, organic rice field. This organic farming corresponds with clean farming and biotic farming that take account of sustainable soil fertility and other life forms in the natural environment. So I refer to Alto Leopold. Even more so, they are activists of the community who vigorously have defended the Kandang mountain ranges from the threats of some uh, multinational investors who planned to build cement factories on the mountain. It is because the mountains contain carts as the major mineral ingredient to make cement. Yeah, so <clears throat> Kunratna and his people realized that the destruction of the karts mountains by the investors for the cement industry would only wreak havoc on the natural environment of the village. They will not only run out of groundwater for the crops irrigation, since the cars store groundwater and carbon, but the blasting of the cars also emits carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Consequently, this emission will, will heat up the local weather in particular and contribute to global warming in general. To defend the future of the Kendang mountain ranges from the investors' threat, they made some protests against the foreign investor and Indonesian government in Jakarta by cementing their feet. They demand that the investor and the Indonesian government will repeal the karst mining permit in the mountains and issue a moratorium to stop any mining activities. So here are the pictures of Kandang um, mountain ranges and this, uh, the karts 
uh, that's the content of the mountain. Yeah, it's very rich cards, rich of cards. And here is uh, Kunratno with other uh, Sadrusika villagers who went to Jakarta to make a rally uh, to protest by cementing their feet. Yeah, and the right, the bottom right pictures. They are a group of sympathizers from intellectual intellectual uh, academies, academic uh, academicians. Yeah, so they also. Uh, support uh, the Lursikov community. So they also made a protest. In cultivating their rice fields, the community privileges the need for cotton royong or cooperative labor as a work ethic to reap, uh, to reap better harvest. The spirit of a collectivity rather than individuality in tilling the fields turns out to result in more and better harvest. They could also share the harvest with each other. This cooperative labor that also called Sambatan serve as an ongoing folk tradition of the community from the old times of their ancestors to the recent time of the millennium. In conclusion, uh, so my conclusion now, Sedul Sikap or Samin communities in Sambung Rejo and Klopodur and Sukolilo village in Pati and Blura are the very epitome of agrarian people who still observe their ancestral, folkloric, moral, and ecological codes. Their tradition of Gotong Royong uh, or cooperative labor has characterized them as an ecologically resilient community. The communities with their ecocentric life principles provide what called Aldo Leopold called biotic community or what uh, Gary Snyder called the commons an interconnected symbiosis between human and non-human animals and the natural environment. In today's world, it is surging global trends and consumerism through various anthropogenic products, the moral ethics that the communities inherit from their ancestors and still observe in their daily life, serve as a model of a sustainable society in the era of Anthropocene. Their concern about the mountain's ecosystem against any anthropogenic exploitative activities epitomizes an essential action to save the earth and the biodiversity of natural habitats. Some of their ecocentric practices in dealing with the land and material goods evoke one's ecological awareness to cherish the natural environment and to observe sufficiency in material overconsumption. That's all for me. Thank you very much for your attention. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Ulianto, for um, a very enriching presentation on the Sejula Sikap community, uh, their reliance on traditional farming methods, their ecological outlook, uh, the connection between their moral, spiritual, and ecological principles. And um, I was especially interested in their idea of the earth as mother and see that as a, a common uh, figure in many indigenous cultures, uh, many, as you said, eco-oriented people. Uh, and uh, your discussion of the in organic farming and natural energy production methods of the people it was yes. very interesting as as well as their activism so they are uh, very much an uh, a model as you said a model of a sustainable society uh, attempting yes. to balance the traditional uh, with the with the demands of globalization and and to preserve that ecological ethic of theirs so uh, thank you very much for a, a beautiful presentation um, do we have any yes. any questions for dr Yulianto? I have uh, one question uh, for you, uh, which is, uh, I, I know you are an eco-poetics eco scholar and, uh, and um, environmental humanities and specifically a literature scholar. Um, how, how have you brought your training in poetics to your research, your ethnographic research on this uh, community? Yes, uh, actually, um, thank you very much, uh, Dr. John, for the question. 
Yeah, actually, um, it start. It began with uh, last year uh, plan uh, to do research uh, in my uh, institution. So I planned uh, to do research about our tradition of the Dolor Sikap community. Uh, but then uh, my proposal was rejected. <laughs> but still, I have concern about the people because uh, they might be the only living indigenous community in Central Java. Yeah. And also, um, I'm kind of fascinated yeah, with the way of living, which are uh, sim uh, unassuming. Yeah, they are not non-materialistic people and also uh, they but still they can live um, in they live adequately I mean they live uh, pro uh, prosperously enough they are prosperously enough although they live in simple ways in modest ways so uh, they just rely on their rice fields and their livelihood and uh, they all, of course they practice uh, organic farming, and also they raise some cattle. Yeah, they have uh, cows. They have like uh, some cattle, and they also so they can uh, fulfill their own needs. Yeah, so they their priority is not selling their harvest their crops to others, but first they can fulfill their own necessities. Yeah. But if they still have uh, leftover, like say leftover from their harvest, their crops, they might sell those to, yeah, maybe uh, local people, yeah, people who live around their neighborhood, yeah. So when I went there last last year, so I met the the activist, Mr. Kunratno. So he also uh, has uh, organic rice field, and then I bought. Uh, so he cultivates red rice, yeah, organic red rice. <laughs> so I bought uh, red rice as his product. <laughs> so he he sold it to me because yeah, because uh, he know me because I I was from Semarang. I'm from Semarang, and then and I went there for some reason yeah, because I want to know more about the Tulusika community. So. Yeah, he will come. He really uh, welcoming, and also, uh, so my interest in indigenous study also, especially from start from the Tulsika community. Uh, let's say, since they are, uh, I, I guess the only, uh, the only indigenous community here in Central Java. Yeah? as you know that most of us. Central uh, people in Central Java already ur urbanized, yeah, already urbanized, urbanized with you know with like right now with global culture with with uh, yeah consumerist culture yeah and then also yeah that's all. Uh, Dr. John is okay. is my answer. Thank answer. you. Yes. Thank you for, for your answer. Uh, we have a, um, some questions for you, um, Dr. Henriquez, from uh, Dr. Agung Prasadja from Montag Surabaya. Uh, yes. what, what are the instruments you've used in your ethnographic research into the oh, okay. community? Yes. OK, actually, uh, yes, that's uh, last. Like I, I, just, I just said that this is uh, actually uh, begin from my last year uh, research proposal, yeah. So uh, that time I proposed also using ethnographic uh, research method, uh, ethnographic. So uh, before I never learned ethnography before, yeah. So this is my kind of independent study, yeah, independent study. So I just don't know it. many books on ethnography, and then I read them by myself, yeah, and then. Yeah, but my proposal was rejected. Yeah, uh, but in this paper, actually, I don't really use uh, too much uh, research methods. Yeah, because this is just like uh, sharing brief uh, um, information yeah, about the community. Yeah. 
this is brief actually they have many other things here yeah, many other cultural aspects here yeah, that i don't uh, talk about this about about this aspects yeah, because my focus is on their farming yeah in even on farming also just i present uh talk a little bit <laughs> just a little bit um, <laughs> okay thank right. you thank yes. you uh, we have a question from ampu Tarang tarangpi um sir what is the world view concept of soul in the cellular cup community how do they view the soul the soul okay all right so the soul uh like this is from the, I guess, from the Hinduism influence, yeah, which is uh, Tapa Brata, yeah, so, sorry, not Tapa Brata, Hespa Brata, Hespa Brata. That's a kind of, uh, the soul means that the people, the Sadurusika people or the community view nature as uh, having soul, yeah, having soul, yeah. That's why they respect their land they respect their land they respect rice fields uh as uh having a kind of in uh inherent values if i may say uh, what uh this is uh, i read from buddhist uh buddhist books yeah inherent values and uh the soul here also just like from the philosophy hasta uh in which they refer to cosmic objects like the sun uh, and then the moon, the stars, and then also water, fire. So it means that someone or a leader should take uh, the qualities of those cosmic objects. Yeah? Like the sun means a leader or someone, not just a leader, everyone should let's say, uh, give lights to everyone, yeah, not, so not discriminating, yeah, so not just choose or choose here, choose here, or just, uh, let's say, give lights to only some people and then do not give to some others, yeah, but just like the sun, the sun always shines upon all, yeah, upon all, yeah? everything, everyone, yeah, so that means the sun, yeah. So and also the moon. Also, there's a philosophy uh, from each cosmic object. Yeah? So if you want to know more, uh, you can just check out the the article on the uh, website. Yeah, but this is still written in Indonesian. Yeah, still written in Indonesian. Thank uh, you. Yes. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. We, we have uh, another question from Parvati. <clears throat> managed to resist the colonial influences since you talked about Dutch colonization. Um, so, yeah. sorry if I broke up there. The first part is. Uh, uh, is the young generation engaging in farming? And secondly, how did the community resist Dutch colonization? Uh, sorry, uh, could you repeat once again, Dr. John? Oh yes, uh, so the first question is, um, is, is the young generation uh, engaging in those traditional farming practices? Mm -hmm. And the second part is, how did the community manage to resist Dutch colonization? Okay. Okay. Thank you. So for the first question, for the young generation of Sadusi Cup community, yes, they still do farming. Yeah, they still maintain the tradition, uh, farming tradition. But uh, based on my interview, yeah, uh, in, I just went there in July, I went there, and then I met the leading figure. Uh, so he has uh, two children. But uh, he told me that his son uh, worked at, uh, he, uh, he's not a farmer, but he worked at uh, oil refining uh, factory in Chapu. Yeah? So Chapu is uh, another, another town near uh, Blura, it's in the border of uh, Blura. Yeah? 
So Cepu is uh, the city, the town of for processing oil, yeah, uh, uh, crude oil, before uh, distributing to uh, gas, uh, gas station, yeah, gas station. And another child is a doctor, uh, but I, I, I guess that he she's still living there with uh, his uh, her parents. So I, I think. Uh, she still, yeah, she still, of course, she still lives as a Sadur uh, family. Yeah, family means that uh, she is not working for a, a company or something, yeah, except the son, yeah, except the son. But most most people in general, in the recent time, they still do farming, yes, yes. Uh, is that right? Is that enough? And then my, my second question, this for the second question, since uh, uh, resistance to death colonizers, uh, that's, that's past history. Yeah? It happened around in the early 19th century, yeah, when Dutch uh, colonizers were here in Indonesia. So, uh, they, I, th I, I think that, yeah, so Sadrusika uh, people famous for their resistant attitude, their resistant manner. But uh, in the present time, I, th I think they maintain their resistant, but resistant in positive uh, meaning, yeah, in positive meaning, not in negative meaning. Their resistant means their principle yeah they still uh hold hold uh their hold to their principles uh strongly yeah they means that in terms of i mean in farming and then maybe in also in education they don't send their children to formal schools but this is also not not all yeah some some of the families also send their uh, grandchildren to formal school. Yeah, yes. But uh, I think their resistant manner may be in the way they live their modest life. Yeah, they don't let's say just follow uh, people in common with consumerist way of life. Yeah, something like that. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Henriquez, for a beautiful presentation and for uh, uh, in increasing our knowledge of indigenous communities within uh, this central Java part of Indonesia. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much.